In this video, we'll create a VJ motion loop using geometry nodes. Due to the procedural nature of geometry nodes, we can create unlimited variations and designs using this technique. It's perfect for combining with your audio or music. So let's get started and let's get into it. So I've opened up a basic blend file here and I'm just going to delete the default light. So with the camera selected, let's go into the object properties, which is the uh, yellowish square on this side and just click and drag and zero everything out. So let's make sure all our rotations and locations are zero. And now let me just disable the cube in the viewport and you will see our camera is pointing down and that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to go into front view with numpad one and I'm going to go over here to the Z location. Now let's hover in this window here and let's hit I and choose a location keyframe. First of all, let's select our camera. So, okay, again, I location and I'm going to go 150 frames, which will be the end of our animation. The last keyframe should be on the last frame here. And I'm going to go negative 10 on the Z axis there and hit I again. Now we have this animation. So if I play this back, the camera will move down, but you will also see it starts speeding up and that's not something that we want because we want this to loop perfectly. So instead let's go over to the timeline, hover with our mouse over here, hit T and choose a linear keyframe interpolation. Also in the camera properties, I'm going to set the focal length to 30 and I'm going to enable depth of field. We need a target for our depth of field to work nicely. So let's just open up this depth of field tab here. I'm going to go shift a empty plane axes. Now let's move this guy down. So G Z and then negative five or so. So with the empty selected, let's control click on the camera in our outliner here. And then over here in this window, let's hit control P and set parent to object. Now this should parent our empty to our camera. And if we play this back, that should work. Yeah. Our empty is following along with our camera. So that's working nicely. Select the camera, go into the depth of field, focus on object and select the empty as our target. Now I'm going to set the F stop to one and just leave everything at that. Let's hop on over to geometry nodes. So in geometry nodes, I'm just going to drag in a few more windows for this specific tutorial and makes it a little bit easier to work with. So I recommend you do the same. So over here, I'm going to add in a timeline and up here, I'm going to split the window, hit numpad zero to go into the camera view. Let's go into rendered mode and voila, we should be good to go here. Now I want to go into the world settings and make sure our world is completely black and this should make our entire right screen completely black as well. Now let's select our cube here and let's hit new to create a new geometry node system. I'm going to select the group input node here. I'm just going to delete it. We'll put it back later to basically expose some values, but for now, let's just remove it. Now this entire project relies on one node to do most of the magic and that's called the arc node. And it's actually, I'm not sure how new it is, but it's uh, a node I haven't really touched before. And it's actually a uh, pretty interesting node to use. So let me just plug this into the geometry here and there you go. So this is the arc node and what it does, it's creating a sort of pie chart, if you will, especially if I now enable connect center over here, you will see we have a sort of pizza pie with one slice missing. All right. So this is what the arc node does. However, if we change the resolution all the way down to two, you will see that it does the inverted. So let's just leave it at that. And I'm just going to disable connect center. Now we can change two values here, which is important. First of all, let's set the radius to two and I'm going to go into top view here with numpad seven as well. And now we have the start angle and the sweep angle. And these are the two values we want to animate. And usually what we'll do in geometry nodes is use a scene time node, one of the newer nodes, which is very convenient for animating things. However, I want this to be a perfect loop and the scene time node makes that a little bit harder. So instead I'm just going to use a value and plug that into the start angle and into the sweep angle. Now I'm going to shift right click and drag over these two to combine this value into one output, which is now splitting into these two. These are both angle values and angles work with radians instead of just a regular float value that we have over here. So what I'm going to do is on the first keyframe, I'm going to hover over this value node and hit I. And then on the last keyframe, instead of just changing this to any random value, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in pi and pi will basically mean half a circle exactly. So if I now hit I again in the timeline, let's hit T and choose linear as well. Now let's see how that looks. And we should be getting exactly half a circle. So that's not a full circle. It doesn't make a full rotation. It makes half rotation. So what we want to do is we want to take a math node, set it to multiply and set the value to two. 
Now we should get one full rotation and this will give us a way to tweak the overall speed. So this is one full rotation now. And if we set this to four, it will be twice as fast or eight, it will be four times as fast. So whatever you want, in this case, I'm just gonna leave it at two for now. Now we have the sweep angle and the start angle moving at exactly the same value. And that's why this doesn't look very nice yet. So we wanna change some of this. And to do that, we are going to use a sign node. So I'm gonna add another math node plug that into the bottom and set this guy to sign. And now we should get a nice sign motion. And let me just explain what that is. The mathematical function for a sign would look something like this. So sort of like a wave, if you will. And because we use this value, it's actually very, very easy to um, get a constant motion going up and down for this value. So instead of just one continuous value, it would go up and down, up and down, up and down, creating more of a random look and also making it look visually more interesting. All right, so that's working perfectly. Now, we only have one R, and what we wanna do is we wanna create a bunch of these. Actually, we are going to create several hundreds of these, and that is what creates the final effect eventually. I'm gonna add a instance on points node, and this will automatically plug our arc into the points. I don't want that. I want it to go into the instance, and for the points, I actually wanna use a curved circle. So let's just take a curved circle there. And this is already starting to look quite interesting. Instead though, I'm gonna set the resolution to six and we need a way to actually change these lines because I go like this now, you will see the motion is kind of strange and the rotation, especially if I enable the connect center, you will be able to see very well. They are all rotating from their own origin like this. Now I wanna change the way these pivot. And to do that, we can change this rotation over here. So if you see, I do it like this we can change the rotation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a spline parameter node, which has the length value over here, and we can use that to actually change the rotation. Now, if I just plug it in here, you will see it starts behaving very strange. So what we need to do is we need to tell Blender to define the motion to just one axis. So as always, we'll use a combine XYZ for that. I'm just gonna take this value and plug it into the Z, and we are starting to get something that looks visually appealing. So if I now disable the connect center, we get sort of like a camera shutter diaphragma effect. Let's take it to another level by adding several more of these. So again, we have the instance on points node. Let's just duplicate it and plug it in between. It will automatically take it into the points again. So let's just change that into the instance. Take another curved circle node. So just duplicate the one we already had with shift D and plug that into the points again. So now we have six more of these circles. And if I play this back, this is how it looks. Now I'm gonna increase the radius for this one to three, but you can already tell that we have basically unlimited variations by changing these radius, this one, change the resolution here, change the resolution here. There's already so many things you can do uh, with just these couple of notes. For now though, I'm gonna stick to my own plan and leave it as it is right now. All right, so that works perfectly fine. Again, we want to create way more of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another instance on points node, take it into the instance. And in this case, I wanna create some vertical stuff going on here. So um, if we were to take this back here, you will see it's just flat. It's one dimensional and I wanna create more of these going down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a curved line, plug this down here and let's take this into the points. Now this will add a, a line going up one meter in the Z direction. So if, instead of it going up though, I want it to go down. So I'm gonna go negative 50 on the Z for the end point there. And you will see we have two points now, one at zero and one at negative 50. We need way more of these. So we're going to add a resample curve node, which will look at our curve and resample it with the given amount of points. In this case, I'm gonna use a length version here, and this will apply a point on every length interval. So in this case, I'm going to set it to five meters, basically meaning we have 10 of these. All right, so now we have more. And if we're to go into camera view and we're to play this back, you will see, okay, so this is working. It's already looping. We are moving through it. It's looking pretty cool already. Let's start making it look like you can actually see it because if we look over here in a camera view, um, nothing's really going on just yet. To do that, we need to make this a mesh. So we have the curve to mesh node and you might be thinking, okay, but is this still a curve? Yes. Blender retains the curve value for all of this. So since we're only using curves, and that's why I'm not using stuff like a mesh circle, for example, the final output over here will be a curve as well. So we can just take a curve to mesh node, plug that in between here, and then add another curve circle, which I'm gonna set to a minimum resolution of three. It can't go any lower than that. And just plug this into the curve profile. Now this will be way too big. So I'm gonna set the overall thickness to be about 0.02. 
two, and now we get a bunch of these tiny lines. Let's add a set material node, plug that in between here. And over here in our materials tab, let's create two materials. First of all, we have the default material, which I'm just going to call lines and I'm going to create another one. So plus new, let's call this guy spheres and let's select our lines material over here. So set material, choose click and choose the lines material. And on the right side here, let's set the emission to white, set the value to be about 25 or so. Let's take it into the blue already. Just going to add a tiny splash of blue in there. So as you can tell, there's no bloom as of now. And that's because we need to enable it. So let's just do that right now. Let's enable bloom over here, go into color management and set it to medium high contrast. And for the bloom, I think the default setting is a bit too strong always. So I'm just going to take the intensity down to 0 0.025, which is half of the normal value. All right. So that works perfectly fine as well. Now I'm going to make them a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to add another zero here. So now they are absolutely tiny. And that's exactly what we want because we want everything to be minimalistic. We have so many of these lines that if we make them too thick, the overall effect will be overwhelming, uh, overexposed and not very good looking. 0.002 works for that. As you could tell in the initial render, I also had all of these points over on the edges there. And since we have this curve output, we can actually take this and use another instance on points node and start instancing something on it. Pull this a little bit to the side here. I'm going to add in another node there. Keep everything nice and uh, organized. So I'm going to take a icosphere. So take that into the instance and then let's set this guy to be, you know, point. 0.02 maybe take a join geometry node plug it into the end there and combine both of these together so now we should have a bunch of these icospheres although they aren't very visible because we aren't applying a good looking material to it so let's leave it at 0.02 for now let's duplicate our set material node and just plug it in there and there they are so they are appearing and we are still using the lines material though so instead let's select the spheres material and on the right side let's select our spheres material in the material tab enable the emission set it to wide and set the emission strength to 25 as well. And for now, you can choose any color that you want, obviously, but I'm going to use this nice blue color over here. Now, what we can also do to increase the overall blueness of the scene is we can change the bloom color. So let's go back into the uh, render properties here, select the color for our bloom and just give it a very light blue tint as well. We have the icospheres over there, which I'm going to increase the subdivision to three. So they are nice and round and maybe even apply a set shade smooth in between here. And there you have it. So they are now nice and smooth. Now I want to add one final rotation because overall this thing isn't rotating and we can use the same value that we already had over here to actually tweak the rotation here. So if I change the Z rotation on this instance on points node, which is the one where our curved line comes together with all of our arcs, we can actually make it so that our overall object starts rotating as well. So again, combine X, Y, Z node. Let's just duplicate this one over here, plug that into the rotation and let's take this value and plug it into the Z rotation. Now I'm going to add a few more of these connectors so I can actually make this organized like so. And there you have it. So now our rotation should be also moving in an overall fashion. Fashion. So we have a basically a triple rotation going on. We have the overall arc rotation, we have the first circle rotation, and we have the final complete object rotation. How can we tweak all of these settings? Well, we can do this by actually tweaking some of this stuff over here. However, that's not a very convenient way of working. And I want a way to actually do this from the side over here by adding in a group input node. Now let's take this group input node and let's expose some values that we want to work. With. So we have the resolution over here, which is something, well, as you can tell, I mean, wow, <laughs> that looks pretty dope. So we want to work with this resolution as well. So let's just drag this guy into the group input, duplicate it over here and drag this resolution into a new socket over here, duplicate it again and let's drag this value, which is the speed value and drag it in here as well. Now let's duplicate it one more time, take it over here and take the length value, which is basically the vertical density. Quick trick I want to show you if you right click on this node and you go down to collapse and hide unused sockets, you can click this and expose it then and you will only be left with the actual socket that you're using, which I think looks way cleaner. So I'm just going to do that for all of these nodes. All right, so that's basically only one expose. However, now I think of it, I want to expose one more thing, and that's actually this connect center. So I'm just going to take another group input node, drag it down here, 
and plug in the connect center here. All right, so we have all of these values exposed on the modifier now. So that means if we are in layout over here, we can still tweak all of these settings. However, the naming is not very uh, clear. So let's just go ahead and tweak that over here in geometry nodes. Let's hit N, go down to group and we can now change all of these values here. So first of all, we have the uh, resolution over here. So this is the resolution for the inner circles. So I'm going to call this guy inside resolution. And this is going to be the outside resolution, obviously, because this will be the other one. So outside resolution. Let me just increase this and you will see uh, the difference. OK, so now we just get more of these circles overall. And then we have the value over here, which is our speed. So let's rename that. And then we have the vertical length. And finally, we have the connect center, which we can toggle on or off if we want to. And it's it's a perfect loop. So if we were to play this back, and it loops perfectly. However, the only thing that you might be able to notice is that we are getting closer towards the end and eventually it resets to the top. So what I want to do is I want to add some volume in there so you won't be able to tell that's going on. So over here, let's add in a cube, scale it up so it covers our entire scene, something like this. Tap into edit mode and go into face select, select the bottom face and just drag this guy all the way down so we have our entire thing covered over here. Let's go into the object properties, viewport display, and set it to wire so we can actually still see our geometry over there. Now I'm going to add a new material for this cube, which I'm going to call volume. Delete the principled BSDF by clicking over here and hitting remove, then opening up the volume tab and adding in a principled volume with a density of about 0.25 or so. And now we should get a nice amount of fall off. And the further down we go, the less we'll be able to tell they're there. That's a perfect loop. And we have full control over everything. So we select our geometry nodes here. We can change this to be, you know, a very high number, create some of this cool looking spiral stuff. Maybe set this lower and maybe set this guy higher. You know, there's so many variations. There's so many options uh, of things to do. As I showed you, it's completely versatile. It has so many options and that's why it's perfect for creating VJ loops for your music. All right, so that wraps up the video and I want to thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe. As always, the project file for this video is available on my Patreon and so are over 40 other projects. So great value there and it really helps support the channel and helps me keep making these videos. And if you want to support me, please consider becoming a patron. It is uh, much appreciated. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. This video was made possible with the support of the following patrons. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it a ton.